We've got a series of demonstrations showing some of the vulnerabilities in the Internet of Things and mobile devices. And the reason for that is that a lot of people are very focused on security issues on PCs and Macs, but don't really pay enough attention to what the attackers can do here. So we thought we might step through and have a look at what attackers can do to an Android mobile phone and how to hack some of the new IoT devices. So let's have a look at Android first. This device is running an out-of-date version of Android, so it's not running the latest software. That's actually remarkably common. Less than 0.1% of the users we've seen from statistics are running Android version 5, and a very, very small number of users are on 4.4, which means the most popular versions are 4.1, 4.2, a little bit of 4.3 in places. So what I'm going to do on this tablet here is just browse to a website. And this is a legitimate website. It's not something naughty. But unfortunately, the attackers have attacked this web page. And what we've done here is inserted a little bit of malicious code that takes advantage of the fact this is running out-of-date software. Uh, it's actually the web view vulnerability for anyone who wants to look at the technical details. Now, as soon as I've done that, I've got a little error on the screen, otherwise nothing in particular. So I'm just going to leave my Android device here. Now let's turn to the attacker's system. In this case, I'm running over a local wireless network for security purposes, but this works very well over 3G or 4G, so the attacker can do it from the other side of the world. If we look at our system here, we can see a connection from the Android device back to the attacker. This back door enables us to take control of the device, gain access to files, and do other exciting things. So let's join the control channel with this command. And let's start by having a look at what's actually on the device. We're going to go to the storage card. So here's our SD card. And you can see here we've got photos. That's the DSIM folder. We've got documents, downloads, movies, even a file called secret.txt, which I created on the device earlier. Now, nothing is happening on the screen, so the victim has no idea that anything is wrong, but the attacker has access to all of your files. Let's make this a little creepier. We can actually access the webcam. So let's access the front camera, and I'm just going to hold this here. There we go. Now, I've just taken one little snap through the front camera. We can actually access the camera on the back as well. And you can even live stream them. So you can get a constant video. As I'm walking down the street, you can see where I am. This same software enables us to get GPS information. If we want to, we can even record the microphone. Now, this isn't the only way that this can happen. There's also a method where you install a nasty application. And that's actually been one of the more popular ways that attackers have done this. Infection via the Google Play Store is very popular. So far in our collection, we've seen a little over 1.3 million nasty applications, which is an alarmingly large number of pieces of, of nasty malicious code. Small compared to the PC, where we see over 250,000 per day, now, the Internet of Things is a different topic, of course, and it's actually a lot worse than the state of mobile security. But let's have a look at hacking CCTV cameras, because that's fun. Now, I'm not picking on this one vendor. I've repeated these kinds of flaws in about 12 different CCTV manufacturers. The big issue here is that these devices are failing to implement what we would regard as basic security, things that came in, you know, when I was a child in information security. If you pick up any modern smartphone like this and you type in a pin code five, ten times and you get it wrong, the device locks. Account lockout is a very, very normal feature in any modern piece of technology. Yet an astonishing number of Internet of Things devices don't do it. So let's actually go and execute an attack against the CCTV camera. And this attack just works by 
connecting to the camera and saying, is the password this, 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 this? It's going to try thousands of times per second really, really quickly. Now, this would have worked against computers and mobiles back in 2005, but in 2015, no self-respecting manufacturer would allow this to work. This actually identifies the password in less than a minute, which means we can connect up to our mobile camera with the password supersafe142, click on server mode, and immediately take control of the device. So we've got a nice live feed, and we can see the rest of the room. Of course, there's an even bigger issue. I mean, that took less than a minute to hack. It was easy. Most people don't even bother changing the password. We've done uh, a lot of research looking for these devices online. I found 540,000 of them running a default configuration. Now, that means we were able to find things like this school in the United States. No password. Audio capabilities to listen to the children. Or this petrol station in what I believe is Malaysia. This is actually a HD camera where you can zoom in and you can see the credit card details and the PIN number. And it's feeding out to the internet. You can see the till code that's used to unlock the tills. And my personal favorite, there's actually a view of all the chocolate bars. So you can see the absolute best time to rob this store and gain maximum Mars bars. Obviously very important to any attacker. These kinds of things are scary because if Microsoft or Apple were to do this, they'd be dragged through the press backwards. But these devices are making their ways into our homes, into our workplaces, and all around us. I recently finished a demonstration showing I could blow up a light by attacking wireless power systems. And as someone that spends their time writing exploits, understanding what the attackers do, I can tell you the maturity of the Internet of Things is about where PCs were more than 10 years ago. So exploiting a modern Windows 8.1 system, you know, the latest and greatest, or even Windows 10, is actually exceedingly difficult. You need some very low-level technical skills. You've got to be able to construct a return-oriented programming chain, do stack pivoting and call low-level APIs. It's hard. A lot of the attacks we've been looking at with Internet of Things devices are actually staggeringly easy. Now, that doesn't mean the more advanced attacks aren't possible, but for example, brute forcing into the CCTV camera, I'm using a tool and technique that is literally 10 years old. You can go to Google, find it, copy and paste it, run it, and it just works. So these are not difficult security flaws, and that just shows how embarrassing it is that they exist.